All right, so this is just a little short uh, uh, demonstration of how you would do the math uh, from the freezing point depression lab uh, in order to figure out molar mass. So we didn't really go over it very well in the pre-lab, and so because I think it's one of these things that unless you're sitting down actually doing it, um, you know, it'd be best if you could do it like in front of the professor so I could help you along uh, understanding. And, and in the absence of that, since you're probably gonna do this at two in the morning and I'm not in the mood to, to stay up at two in the morning uh, to help you, um, you can pretend this is like a virtual me um, that will basically help you and you can pause and revisit and do everything. I mean, maybe you don't need it, um, but let's just uh, walk through it and then you can see how to do this. All right. so. Um, if we think about what we have in terms of data, okay, we have uh, the mass of the solute, okay, which is our liquid. Let's say we're doing this for the liquid. Um, now, um, I'm going to go ahead and start incorporating uh, uh, uncertainty. So, in this case, I've done what I call one tear. In other words, I teared a beaker and then poured the solvent in the mass that I didn't leave. So, in that case, you know, the error on a balance is plus or minus 0.01. The tear counts as a measurement and then your final measurement. So uh, in my case here, then my error, would, my uncertainty would be 0.002. Now, if you leave and come back, then that uncertainty may grow. So you'll need that, that number may vary. It's not going to be any smaller. This will be the smallest it can be. Uh, but depending on whether you move back and forth, this could be bigger. Okay. And so let's say we have that. But now initially, our initial temp, let's just say it's zero. And the error there, the uncertainty associated with the temperature measurement, about 0.1 degree. Um, and then while that's equilibrating, uh, we've masked a beaker. Okay, this will be the beaker that we're going to uh, put our solution in at the end. Um, and let's say we have a mass of 150. Now, this is, again, a single tear. We tear it at zero. We put the balance on there and measured it. So this number could also be bigger, although it's probably not. Uh, it won't be smaller. Okay. Then we add our solute as we did, and we see a temperature depression of minus 4.6 plus or minus 0.1. And then finally, we filter off the ice, measure the in that original beaker here. We add the solution, okay, and now we've we've teared this to zero. We've put these together and we put it back on, and we get this number, okay. So so now that's all the numbers that we should have for this. Now we have another dilution, but we're just going to do one dilution uh, as our demonstration. The, the other one's just exactly the same. All right, so let's think about our, how we're going to get molecular weight. So we know that delta T equals M, uh, Kf, and I. Okay, whereas Kf, we know what Kf is. That's 1.86 for water. And we know I, in this case, for the liquid, we're going to assume it's, it's, it's 1. Okay? So now that gives us, allows us to solve molality. So molality has moles in it. Okay? If we want molecular weight, ultimately we need grams per mole. Okay? So we have a grams up here, and we'll solve... Uh, for moles in this equation, and then you put those together and get an apparent molecular weight. Okay, so so if we start from uh, from this equation, okay, first we need to solve for delta t. We need to know what delta t is. Okay, we take our numbers. Okay, it's an absolute number, so it doesn't have to be negative. So that'll be 4.6, and then the errors on addition and subtraction are added, and so it'll be 4.6 plus or minus 2. That allows us then to solve for molality, so that's delta T divided by Kf over I. Again, I is going to be 1 equals 4.6 divided by 1.86 times 1, and so that then equals uh, 2.47 or 2.5, I guess, um, if we're doing sig figs, um, 2.5 um, uh, molality. Okay, so now we need to do the max. So in that case, we'll do 4.8 by 1.86 divided by 1. And so that then will equal um, uh, 2.6. Okay, so that means that our temperature value then, our molality, is 2.5 plus or minus 0 0.1 molal. Okay. So now the question is how do we get from there? to molecular mass, okay? And so that is a little bit more challenging. It's gonna require us to do some manipulations on the numbers, okay? So if we know then that this is 2.5 moles of solute, okay, per kilogram of solvent, okay? We need to figure out how many moles was it of this is actually is though. so we need to figure out how many kilograms of solvent we have okay so we need to solve then for kilograms of solvent 
Okay, so kilograms of solvent then will equal the, kilo, the, the mass of the solution minus the mass of the solute okay, uh, in kilograms. So we'll have to divide that by a thousand. Okay, so we've got mass solute, we've got, okay. So then the other thing we need to have is the mass of solution. Well, so here we have mass of solution and the mass of the beaker. Okay, so that um, gets us part of the way there. When we have the mass of the beaker here, so then we should be able to get it. So the mass of the solution then is going to equal the mass of the beaker, so 257.319. Okay, minus the mass of the beaker, 150.000 plus or minus 002. Although this is starting to look conspicuously like I made up this problem because uh, uh, of the mass of the beaker. Okay, and so then that gives us the mass of the solution being 107. Point, um, and then the error then is, um, these are additive, so 0 0.004. Now this is in grams, so then we need to dilute that, or divide that by 1,000 to get the kilograms. 0 0.107319 kilograms. Okay, now we got some stick figs issues there, but that's okay, plus or minus 0 0.000004. So that gets us this number. Now we have to subtract the solute. So we will take 0 0.107319 plus or minus 0 0.004. And we'll subtract the mass of our solute, which is right here. Now we'll go ahead and put that in kilograms as well. 0 0.015180. Plus or minus 0 0.0000002. Probably be easier if we followed scientific notation here, I'm guessing. But uh, okay, so that then gives us a mass of the solvent, which will be 9.092139. Okay, and that then is going to be with the error, so you have to add those errors together, plus or minus 0 0.000006 kilograms. Okay, so you had to manipulate it a bit, okay, but um, if you just keep track of where your variables are, it's okay. So now we have moles, we know our uh, solute, or we know our molality, okay, and we know the kilograms of solvent, okay, so we can take then the moles of solute is going to equal 2.5 plus or minus 0 0.1 okay and times this number up here 0 0.92139 plus or minus 0 0.00006 okay because if you think about that's mole solute per kilogram solvent this is kilogram solvent okay so we do that number and the answer we should get is point Two, three. Now I'm going to go ahead and, and you know, when you do the min max, you're going to have to, you know, expand the difference. You're going to add this, you're going to add that. So it ends up being uh, 0.23 plus or minus 0 uh, um, 0.01 moles. Okay, so that's once you do all the, I'll, I'll assume you guys know how to do that. All right, so now we've got moles of solute. And we have grams of solute, so we should be able to figure out grams per mole, which is the molar mass. Okay, so the apparent molecular weight is going to be then equal to 15.180 plus or minus 0 0.002 grams divided by 0 0.23 plus or minus 0 0.01 moles. Okay, so when we do that, we should get an answer of 
I think, 66 plus or minus 3 grams per mole. So to get the error right, we would maximize this. So we then our error side, the, the max side, would be 115.182 divided by 0 0.22. Okay, that'll be our max number, and then you just subtract that from the from the ideal number to get the uncertainty. All right, so that's the apparent number, and so now what you would have to do is, I didn't actually describe what my real solute was in this case. You have to compare the two molecular weights, and if the molecular weight that you would calculate for this liquid would fall in that range, then everything looks hunky-dory. Okay, if it's not, then you have to think, okay, looking at these measurements, are there any of these measurements that could be off? And if they are off, how far would they have to be off for it to be enough to make up for it? Okay, it could be that it's pretty easy that maybe if you left a little bit of solution when you did the mass, you know, and, and only two or three mils would be enough to throw it, then, you know, maybe that's a reasonable explanation. If not, Maybe you have to go with the idea that the equation itself, uh, you'd have to question whether it's valid, okay, uh, under these conditions, okay. So a lot of times these things are done under ideal, uh, you know, ideal gases. You have ideal solutions as well, and there's real life, right? In real life, gases are not ideal, and sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. So this may be one of those cases. So you just have to look at the data and figure that out for yourself, because that's what really, if you're in the science business trying to prove or disprove hypotheses, you have to have confidence that it's uh, a real number, okay, and not just a limitation of your uh, data. Now, if you're solving for I, okay, um, let's say in the second part you're solving for I, okay, we know in the second part, the first part we know these liquids are not going to dissociate, so it's probably safe to assume I equals one, but in the salts we would assume that they would dissociate. So what you'll do then is you'll take your, um, um, the real molecular weight, so the, what we'll call the theoretical molecular weight okay, and divide that um, by the experimental molecular weight that you calculate using this experiment okay so um, and then see if that matches up so for something like sodium chloride or potassium chloride we assume they totally dissociate in other ions and so I would be equal to 2 so hopefully that matches if it doesn't match again it's a question of where is there enough uncertainty in your measurements to make a difference? Okay, so so again, this is this is. If you have any other questions, please come down and talk to me uh, in my office. I'll help you out. Um, you know, uh, the manual here is a little bit uh, opaque in this area. I think so. I think um, you know. Hopefully, this. this